Hello there, sword friends. Today is going to be a sword log vlog vlog type video about Taisuki and why Taisuki. Well, because I got a chance to visit with the owner Jack while I was in Thailand visiting or vacationing with my family. Uh, I know I haven't made a video in a couple weeks. I've been vacationing, as I noted, with my family in Thailand. It's been a blast. I had a wonderful time. I got to see all sorts of really amazing, cool stuff. There was this rustic island getaway that I got to go on and relax there. I got to see uh, beautiful mountains jettisoning out of a freshwater sea and take some boat rides and do some snorkeling and walk around in the jungle. It was, it was beautiful and wonderful. Uh, the folks in Thailand were very generous and patient, and I had, I had overall a, a great time. I got to see some really cool stuff that was lots of fun. The weather was a little rough. I am, perhaps for those of you that watch this channel, know I am from a cold weather environment, <laughs> 95 degrees, and humid was a little, a little rough on me, to say the least. I looked like I came out of the shower perpetually, except I'm sure I didn't smell like it. In any case, I got a chance to see some swords while I was there. One was in a Bangkok market. I was walking around, and there was... Uh, swords that they call a Lao sword. I'm not sure exactly what typology it is, but in any case, it, I didn't have a chance to really buy much because I did not have any check luggage or a way to bring it back to the United States. So I got a chance to just look with my eyes, and I guess that is how you would generally look. And in, in any case, I got a chance to see some swords in a market, and I also got to visit Taisuki. Now, unfortunately, I did not get a chance to visit the factory. Uh, I did not get a chance to see the forge or any work being done, but I get, did get a chance to talk with the owner and see more Taisuki blades than I've gotten a chance to see in the past. Now, I've had a few versions of uh, Taisuki blades that I've owned, a few of the SO3 and a few of the KTN or, or um, non-folded Sanmai pieces, and all of them have been secondhand, so it was my first chance to really hold new product uh, and at the at the place they were manufactured because very often the change in temperature or humidity or climate you might say could have some adverse effects on how tight or things fit or things like that so anyway i got a chance to see some stuff and i will i will talk about it now now the first thing to note about these blades is that they are new but i don't know exactly if they are done we're still at the forge here and so I, it wasn't exactly clear to me if these are pieces that are ready for sale and done uh, or if there is more work required. Obviously on some of them there is more polishing work to be done. But I did get a chance to inspect the Ito wrap which was done up in plastic so presumably it is it is finished and ready to go. And the Ito, to, uh, to, to their credit, was much tighter than on the SO2 models that I was, I was seeing. Perhaps it's because of the hot humid climate and the transition to a cold dry one in Minnesota that causes the Ito to loosen up so drastically. Uh, or maybe it was age, it's tough for me to say. In any case, I will note that the Ito was significantly tighter than on the blades that I tested. It could certainly be tighter than is pictured here. Uh, in many cases, with a freshly mounted Japanese sword, the Ito is so tight that you can't even press it around with your thumb. These do move under some pressure, but it does take more pressure to, to move it. So it's certainly a serviceable, usable tightness on these particular blades. Uh, some of the polish work was also not finished. There were some different blade typologies, prototypes, things like that that were there that I got a chance to look at. But overall, it was it was really nice. I got to see a lot of different stuff. So there were a couple things that stood out to me. Uh, one, there's a general different look that Taisuki has to many of their blades that, uh, that stand out aesthetically. I think they're very pleasing. There's one, the overall hamon and, and type of Hada that you might see in some of their folded blades that I think is somewhat unique to them. Uh, whether or not you like it, I suppose, is subjective, but I think it's rather pretty. They also feel dynamically very nice. Now, I don't have any weapon dynamics computer information to share with you because, uh, because that would have been a pain in the ass to measure and poke around with. But I would say that, dynamically speaking, they actually feel better. They seem like very big, stout blades. They're pretty wide and and, uh, and they have a, a presence about them that is certainly not small, but they feel quite good in the hand, very agile, and for whatever, for whatever that's worth. You've probably seen me review a few swords and you know what I tend to like. Uh, the blades have felt uh, reasonably comfortable for their size. I was a little kind of taken aback that so many of them felt uh, very good in the hand. Usually I would expect something a bit more clunky given the size and stature of the blades. The fittings are also the other bit that stand out. So. Jack mentioned that these are 75% silver fittings, not 100 or 95% silver or whatever whatever jewelry silver might be, uh, mostly because it's too soft, and so he uses a, a lesser degree of silver, but there is a lot of silver on the blade. You can see the Kojiri, uh, in some cases the Kurikata and Koiguchi area are silver. Uh, there's silver in the Habaki, there's silver on the Seppa, there's silver on the Fuchikashira in many cases. 
Uh, I'm not sure to what degree silver is used in the Suba across the products, but I believe that is the part that is not silver. In any case, they are unique and different, and I believe they're cast to some degree, but the, the fittings are quite unique and, and interesting. Um, I like that they're doing some Hondachi style fittings on some of their blades. Overall, I think they do a really good job on the fittings. They offer a unique level of quality there that other people do not. I also got a chance to talk to Jack about a few different things and get his subject now. Bear in mind, English is obviously not the first language, and his English is actually very good. I understood him quite well, but uh, keep in mind that as you hear me talking, this is just a conversation that we're having about swords. It's not a formal interview of any kind. Uh, my wife was gracious enough to be my camera woman uh, while my daughter fell asleep on the couch. Yeah. Yeah, so the, that's a, uh -huh. it's a common thing, but it's, uh -huh. these are really expensive, right, uh -huh. in the, in the mass production scale yeah. here on the, on the high end. Yeah. And so, the expectation is that this won't come loose. Yeah, yeah. So you, you go to that swing it and, to be perfect. and so ideally, uh, if I'm moving these around, they just don't, they don't move at all. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty tight. It moves a little bit, but not not the same as. I, want, I bet it has to do with the heat because it's so. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand that we are trying to improve this, but um, yeah. Uh, from uh, when compared with the other manufacturers, we we never use the glue. Yeah. So that's why it's very hard to do. <laughs> I'm trying to, but um, yeah, yeah. I saw your review uh, about this too. This is very. One of the topics that came up was my critique of the Ito in the previous review that I made, and there were a couple things that struck me about this. One, I was humbled that, that Jack watched my video and actually paid attention to it and was interested in my opinion and wondering if it was better. In that video, I was relatively harsh on the on the Ito wrap. Now, I don't necessarily think I was harsh, it was loose and that's not acceptable, and Jack acknowledged that and said, hey, that, that isn't good and he's working to make it better and was curious if it was. Um, you'll be hopefully happy to know that it was. It was not what I would call fantastic work. It was not so uh, so tight that I couldn't move it around under pressure, but it did take pressure to move and it didn't give me the sense that it was going to come untangled if you were starting to swing it around. Yeah, okay. yeah from the crisis that um, I cannot access to the customer. That's why I asked you for the uh, affiliate marketing because um, uh, the Google and the YouTube and Facebook brought our advertising. Yeah, our yeah. brought our advertisement. So um, not so that's why our dealer cannot cannot doing that business. So they cross and then. Uh, we knew that uh, the demand there, customer want this, but uh, I cannot get into them. I cannot reach to them. So that's why I'm, I'm trying to change to change the ways of the marketing right now to the affiliate marketing. Yeah, that uh, many people cannot, uh, or the owners of the dojo, reviewer, or uh, some people who, who admire or like the Japanese sword, they can come to apply with us and then they can making the review or share our information by using that link. Yeah, that link will, uh, is, uh, is actually this is our website that contain their uh, ID mm -hmm. inside there too. Yeah, and when the customer coming to buy this via that link, yeah, that affiliate link, yeah, they can, they can turn the profit. Actually, to expand a little on what Jack is talking about here, it sounds like Google and YouTube are a little more sensitive with their ad policies, and it's had an effect on Jack's business, so much so that he's looking to try marketing in a different way. You know, business in general is a is a grow, change, or die type situation. So the, the basic gist is he's looking to do affiliates. Now, affiliates are probably something you, you're familiar with or have seen in the past where somebody says, hey, use this coupon code or use this link, and that gives some commission to the to person, the influencer, the YouTuber, the the promoter uh, gets a, some sort of commission or kickback and the manufacturer gets some business or the, the provider gets some sort of business. So uh, Jack did offer me an affiliate link in the in the interest of transparency and I said I would uh, I would rather not. It feels weird even though this is not a professional gig. 
I'm just a guy that talks about swords on the internet, but if I get money for talking about them, I don't know. There, there's some bias inherent there, and I don't, I don't need it. So um, I did offer to put a link in the description down below for free. I'm not getting any money out of it. If you find value in Tetsuki products and would like to buy one, then you hopefully the link helps you. Hopefully this video helps you, but no, I'm not taking any money for it. Is this the user? Ah, it's been changed. Which one is this? Uh, S05. It's rejoining in Orasco Superior Star. It's a friend in Japan. Yeah, okay. Because um, uh, I just want to do different things. But uh, to have to be followed to the uh, Japanese theory too. Yeah. Not, not many manufacturers do this. <laughs> yeah. It's very, uh, it's different. Very yeah, different. I, I can, I can read this. This is the best one we have right now. And the structure is from sunlight. There are three different kinds of the steel inside. Is this in finished polish? Is this done? Not yet, really. But uh, finally, uh, before we ship it, uh, my worker will have to polish and to create other things. Okay. Look better than this. Because <laughs> this looks... So when, when you look at other stores, where do you think your products are better? What? Why Why should somebody pay <laughs> a higher <laughs> price? Thank you. Because um, I'm trying to do the best here. Because um, uh, when, when we are the collectors, we, we know what we want. Yeah, I'm trying to because um, well, I would not do the best product here because uh, with my collection I don't want to collect the best product that everyone has, everybody has. Yeah, so um, I, I I just want to join the special power that this is the value for the collecting. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, trying to do. Yeah. So um, one month we can do just for it. Uh, 15 or 20 is the word for, for a man, yeah. Why, why only 15 or 20? Um, because this is very hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has got a pretty valid point here in the sense that swords are hard. It's, it's hard to do them, it's a very laborious process and they are they are handmade objects. And there's a little bit more that I learned. Unfortunately, it's not conversation that made it on camera, but things that I didn't know going into the review. So one is that the sayas are all individually made. And why is that different? Well, many manufacturers in China that are selling $300 swords are not necessarily just in China. Manufacturers that are sending, selling less expensive swords have sayas and handles that are made to fit basically certain tolerances of swords. So they can be made separate apart from the blade itself. And that means that the size is made to a tolerance, the blade's made to a tolerance, and given that there's some degree of handmadeness to all of them, uh, they may or may not fit together in, in the best way possible. Tatsuki is making size for each individual blade, and that's not something I really highlighted in my review and something I think bears noting. So one, uh, it means that the Saya doesn't rattle. So if you take the Saya and you shake it, it doesn't it doesn't rattle, and that's that's certainly a point worth noting, especially as it seemed relatively consistent consistent across the swords that I was able to see while while on site. Uh, the other bit to note is that they glide really well in and out of the Saya. So uh, as you're if you're a practitioner, if you're moving the sword around a lot, it's very nice to have a sword that glides in and out and isn't raspy and doesn't rattle around. It's a very pleasant user experience and something. Something that bears noting, certainly. I will still contend that the Koiguchi area is too wide. Now, Jack elaborated on some of the reasons behind it. One, it breaks less in shipping. Two, it's thicker and safer, and some practitioners may notably prefer that. I, I know the best of us have cut through the Koiguchi area and, you know, sometimes regrettably into ourselves. So, uh, the thicker wood does make it less likely to break. Um, but it, it still it looks weird and it's not necessarily what I think the aesthetic is going for and if, if they're making them individually the point is that they could make them thinner they just choose not to because it, it's more likely to break whether whether in use or whether in shipment so I understand the reason I just don't necessarily I don't necessarily agree that that's the right way to go around it anyway those are my thoughts and opinions on the matter I don't like a big thick Koiguchi but perhaps other practitioners or collectors do it does serve a practical purpose I understand why it's included and I suppose that's why it bears noting I still think it looks weird though anyway there are other pieces that are worth noting the inclusion of precious metals 
the the fact that these have a little bit more hand touch to them than the average mass production piece, whether it be in the sire or in the fittings uh, or in some of the finishing. The swords were all relatively sharp, relatively well done. The polish work was not super well finished, honestly, though I don't necessarily think I got to see a lot of really finished pristine ones. It looks like the the, the worker still has a little bit left to do on some of these swords. In any case, one thing that I did think Jack said that was interesting was that he's trying to make pieces that are things he'd want to collect, something that's different than what everyone else is doing. And to that end, I think, I think he's hit the mark. There are styles and geometries and things that not really everyone else is doing in the market that uh, that he is, and so I think that's that's pretty cool. Anyway, I'm not trying to sell stuff or change hearts and minds, but I had a conversation with the owner of Tetsuki. I was very grateful for his time, so special thanks to Jack at Tetsuki for taking the time out of his day. I know I was five hours late to the to the meeting we planned, so I was grateful that he still met with me and showed me the swords he did. It's unfortunate that I couldn't see any of the factory floor or see people performing work on the swords. I had hoped to do it, but that's what happens when you're late to the party. Anyway, that's all I have for you. I hope it's been an interesting video. As always, cheers and thanks for watching.